Hi, and welcome to At Home Art Lessons with the Art Groupies, developing great art lessons. We are going to work with Wanda today, and Wanda, she understands the art world. She realizes that art is more than just creating. It's making connections with art from other culture, cultures and finding personal meaning and inspiration. We're going to take a field trip with Wanda and we're going to meet up with this guy, John Bonovich. John Bonovich is an American artist from the great state of Montana. He was inspired by the Jungle Book and his dad had a love of the outdoors. He's a wildlife artist and conserva conservationist. He creates beautiful pictures with impressive detail. This is an actual picture of his painting. Yes, painting. I thought he was a photographer when I first laid eyes on his artwork. He creates these impressive details by spending tons of time out in the fields of Africa. So our field trip today is to Africa. And John Bonovich is known for his dramatic portrayals of wildlife. So we're going to create an elephant. We're going to start with a line and we're going to work our way down creating the head and the trunk first. So we're going to pick whatever kind of colored crown you would like or whatever medium you would like to create with. Again, I'm going to use the simple element of line and I'm going to start at the top of my paper and I'm going to press hard and I'm going to work my way down and I'm going to come up. This is the beginning of my trunk. For the opening of the trunk, I'm going to make the number three upside down and then I'm going to follow the leader and I'm going to start weaving my line to make those little ripples trying to make my elephant's trunk look a little bit more um, realistic like John Bonovich. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to come up here and finish the head. I'm going to round it down and then elephants are huge so I'm going to use the whole piece of paper. So I'm going to come all the way over here and I'm going to come down for the back end of my elephant and I'm going to simply make a straight line and before I get to the end of the paper I'm going to come over for a horizontal line and that's one of my elephant's legs. Come up again for a vertical, horizontal, vertical, and horizontal. They are my two back legs. Then I'm going to come down again, a little bit bigger space this time, for my next leg, and then the last leg. So total of four legs for my elephant. I'm going to come on up and I'm going to join right around to that trunk. And there's my elephant. I'm going to add an eye for my elephant. And I'm also going to add the letter C. For his ear. And voila! Maybe add some arches down here for his toes or his toenails, I guess. Don't think elephants have toes. And last but least, I'm going to add his tail. I'm going to come down here, two lines, and then a squiggly zigzag line for the end of his tail. So I used line and I created a giant shape of an elephant. I'm no, now going to create some patterns and I'm going to use that watercolor technique called wax resist. So I'm going to create some beautiful patterns and lines. Patterns are lines and shapes that repeat themselves. So I'm going to start with try to make my elephant 
as creative as possible with as many different lines and patterns that I can create and try to use as many different colors as I can. So I did a dotted line, I made little circles, now I'm creating a zigzag line, can do some triangles, lines and shapes that repeat themselves. Can make a line that kind of resembles how I created the legs. I can create a loop-de-loop -loop line. Now when you're doing a wax resist, you need to make sure you press hard because the wax will resist the watercolor paint and it will not be able to cover it up. So I'm going to repeat that line. Nice little wavy line. I can create a scribbly line. Can create a line that kind of resembles maybe a, a shark fin. So there we have it. Lots of different types of patterns and lines for my elephant. I'm now going to use some watercolor paints. I'm going to make sure my brush is wet and clean. I only want to really use one color for my elephant because this is where all the action is in my pattern. So I'm going to create a red elephant and I'm going to do my best to stay in the lines. Don't have to really worry about washing my brush because I can just keep putting it in the same color. Because like I said, the the color is happening here with all those beautiful patterns that you created. And now when we go over top of it with a nice just very simple watercolor wash. It's not covering up any of those beautiful lines that we made with our crowns because of the technique called wax resist. You can also use pastels. Pastels will also give you this beautiful technique. Fun thing is to maybe even use a white crown or a white pastel. And as you paint, the shapes will appear like magic. If you don't press hard, the crown or the wax will not really work very well. So the secret to this lesson is, like I said, pressing hard. So we're creating an African elephant. We're inspired by John Bonovich. Now John Bonovich, like Wanda says, is more than just an artist. He actually uses the money that he creates from selling his paintings and uses that money to channel it back and support conservation efforts to promote habitat protection. So he uses his money to protect the animal's habitat, which is pretty amazing. So now we're done our elephant. And we're going to use what we call a complementary color. Now that's a new term you might not have heard before. Complementary colors are colors that are across from one another on the color wheel. So our color wheel is first made up of primary colors, that red, yellow, and blue. And the secondary colors are made when you mix the two primary colors together. So if we mix blue and red, we create purple. Blue and yellow, we create green, and red and yellow, we create orange. Now, the complement comes in if you draw a line straight across from each other on the color wheel, you will get these three complementary color teams. So you will have blue and orange, yellow and purple, and red and green. So 
artists use this to create their color and make it pop. So my complementary color of red is green. So I want my elephant to pop. So I'm going to paint the background with a green. And I'm, I'm going to do a very simple wash because again, the most important part of my whole lesson here is these beautiful patterns and making all these different types of line. Artists can't do much if they don't start with just a very simple line. And to become a better artist, you need to have a variety of line to make your subject or your shapes or your images come alive. So line. So again, John Bonovich, a famous wildlife painter and artist. He is also a, a conservationist and he helps the animals from about seven different countries. He has been able to create these beautiful um, conservation efforts to save the animals and the place in which they live. So becoming more than just an artist. So voila, there we have it. An inspired piece by John Bonovich, creating an elephant, an African elephant. And again, this isn't a photograph. This is his, a picture of his painting. Pretty amazing how he even has the smoke coming up or the dust coming up in his movement of running in the sand and the birds are scared and they're flying off. So he creates dramatic port portrayals of wildlife. So John Bonovich with very impressive details. So I hope you enjoyed our field trip to Africa.